Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Learning in Public. In the last episode, I took kind of a deep dive looking at all the things that I've been learning over the past couple weeks, and I referenced a really neat tool called Postman. And I also referenced how Data for SEO has some pretty great examples for how to build out tests for each of their different API endpoints. And here's how to do it. It's actually not that hard. You go to this page, and then you download this Postman examples zip file, and then you double click it. And what it'll do is it'll turn that zip into a big piece of JSON, right? And then you can kind of drag your your folder over here, open Postman. A lot of times I like to work, so I'll have like two things next to each other so I can figure, figure stuff out. And I'll go import. And basically what we're doing is we're importing a collection of different uh, API requests. And so I, here's the zip that I just downloaded. And then here is the data for SEO Postman JSON, we then click import, and it takes a minute or two, in my experience, for it to kind of pull in all the requests, and I found that it just, you know, it takes a minute or two, and so we're going to pause as it continues doing its thing. Okay, so now that Postman has properly imported all of our requests, into a brand new collection which is called data for seo v3 let's open it up and check it out so the way that this works is there's a whole bunch of different api endpoints in this particular case i worked a lot with the serp api and i was specifically looking at the google part of the serps and I also cared about drilling down into the organic, and I was especially interested in playing with the live endpoint and the advanced one. And the reason why I like the advanced is that I was building cloud functions, and cloud functions have a really long runtime. That runtime can be uh, up to 60 minutes now if if the um, if that cloud function is a, an HTTP endpoint, meaning that if it's a cloud function that's activated over the web. And uh, the live endpoint, in the live advanced one, it gives you a response back, generally speaking, in less than about 10 seconds. And so that's perfect for a cloud function. What you're going to find, though, is that it is significantly more expensive than if you were to use what's called the regular method. In the regular method, you need to build a slightly more advanced infrastructure. And what I mean by that is that with the, the advanced method, you make a request to the API. The API does its thing, it goes and crawls the SERPs, and then it responds to your request with a, a JSON response. The regular version is different. You create a task, you then post that task up to the API, and then at some point in the future, the data will return to a webhook, or you can go pull the API to go get uh, that response from the API at some point down the road. And that response can take up to 45 minutes to return, which is a big wait. But at the same time, it's so much cheaper that it's really enticing to use. For my testing, I was pretty comfortable using the advanced API, and I was comfortable with it because of the scale of the requests that we were going to be used the using the tool for. We knew that we weren't going to be doing crazy scale. And when I say we weren't going to be doing crazy scale, you can kind of get a sense of how much testing I was doing. And over the past month, I've done a whole bunch of requests and I've used 46 cents worth of data. 
And I've also taken this as a great opportunity to buy API credits because of the events in the Ukraine. I wanted to do my little part to help support them a little bit. Back to Postman. So the way to drill down is you go SERP API, Google, Organic, Live, Advanced. Click on this. In their documentation, there's always two pieces. They'll show you, they'll build the request for you, they'll add the URL, they'll create all of the information that you need to do a successful request, and then below that, uh, in this little EG, they'll show you an example response. So you can investigate the entire response to see all of the data that comes back uh, from the API in order to build your own tooling to process it. And so how do we do this? So if we go from the EG back up one level, we need to go to the authorization tab. And it says inherit auth from parent. We're going to click this and we're going to change it to basic auth because data for SEO has a really simple API in terms of authorization. You just need to use your username and your API password. And when you sign up for your account, they'll show you your API password here. And, you, and it's a really good idea at that point to write it down and keep it in a safe place. You can also click the send by email button if you've forgotten to do that earlier, and they'll email you that password again, and then you can use it inside Postman. So now that we've set up the authorization, we can go over into the body, and we can change that to some search value. And I love bikes, so I'm gonna do mountain bikes for sale. It's one of the queries that I like to do the most, just to test things. And I'll go send, and then in, a, in about 10 seconds, I think what we're gonna see is a really, really interesting JSON response. And I wanna walk you through some of the lessons that I learned in uh, analyzing that response. Okay, so we've made our request and here's some cool things that you can do in the request. You can say what the language name is. You can say what the location name is. There's also another property called the location code. And Data for SEO has a really long CSV that has all of the different location codes. And this is really useful if you want to be specific about a country uh, or if you want to pick a region or if you want to pick a county, or if you want to pick a city. You can also use uh, the keyword property there. When you're making your requests with Data for SEO, you can submit one task per API request, and you could submit up to 2,000 requests per minute. And then when we get our response back, this is a great example of what it looks like. We can see the version number, we can see the status code, which is a 200, which is really the good one. They tell us exactly how much this API request is going to cost, which is uh, 0.2 cents, which means we can make five of these API calls for every penny. And then we're going to see this tasks array, which is really just the data for this one query which is mountain bike for sale and so inside the tasks array we're going to see the id which is the U uu id or the universally unique identifier for that task it shows us the status code how long it took to to per, to complete the cost how many results the path which is what version you know this is all the api information there's data about the request, you know, uh, the API, which function, the search engine, the search engine type, the language, you know, it's returning all these properties. Here's where things start to get interesting. We got our result, and that's an array of stuff. And we got our keyword, what type, what the domain is, which is the UK version of Google. 
It also shows us that location code, and we could then open up the location code uh, information, you know, the CSV that, that comes from their documentation. And I'm going to explore that in another quick little episode. Um, and then we can see our URL here. And then we can also see this property, which is the one that gets me the most excited. It's called the item types property. These are all of the different search features that show up on that particular page. I've got a shopping, I've got ads, I've got organic, find results on a local pack, I've got images, related searches, and multi-carousel. And then we can see how many results there are, how many items, and then it shows us each of the individual items. Uh, this is a shopping, the shopping block. You can parse it down really, really well, and that to me is really, really exciting. Uh, we can look at each of these and parse them and store them in Firestore or some other database if we wanted to. Uh, and in terms of storage, some people approach this like they want to store the entire JSON response in its raw format in some storage place, whether it's like a Amazon S3 bucket or Google Cloud Storage, or maybe it's being stored as a raw JSON inside Google BigQuery. Uh, all of those make sense. I chose to transform this data to make it smaller and then store the transformed data into uh, Google Firestore which is part of Firebase. Okay, so we're still in our shopping part of the response, and you're probably thinking, holy smokes, this thing's huge. We're already at 528 lines. We're out of shopping, now we're in paid. Now we're in organic. And you'll see that there's different properties for every single one of these. We'll see um, the rank group, which means in the organics, uh, in the organic rankings, uh, how does this particular result rank? And then the rank absolute is for all of the different items on the page. What order is it? You can get XPath information. You can get the domain, the page title, URL, um, breadcrumb that, that Google's using, some more data description, you can get images if they supply them, if there's AMP, um, the text that's highlighted, the links, which are like site links, I think, um, the extended people also search. This is the data that shows up when you go to the page and then bounce back to Google. The about this result information Okay, so that about this result information is really easy to see. You can go mountain bikes for sale, hit enter, and then scroll down to your first organic result, and then click the three dots, and that about this result information and that API response is all inside this pop-up. So you can see a term related to your search appears in the result, bike. And that's what's feeding this information over here, which is really neat. Okay, um, find results on local pack information, which is really interesting. I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and then you're going to see all 100 results, and there's a ton of them. And so you're probably wondering, this thing is a beast, like how do I get value out of this? Should I just, ooh, look, I forgot to show you this. So um, there's some more elements at the bottom of the page. We've got our multi-carousel, which shows a bunch of different uh, items. And then we also have our related searches, which we're definitely wanna, going to want to grab. Uh, now, you're probably thinking like, wow, that's almost 6,000 lines of code. That's a lot of data and that's a lot of data to store, and that's a lot of data to process. Uh, there's a couple different strategies to take. Uh, one would be to store it raw, one would be to process it. 
you know, there's a lot to unpack here with every single kind of property that's available inside of data for SEO response. You have to make decisions about what's important. You need to know, like, are you going to care about position left? Because whether something is left or right is a property in every single uh, one of the 37 different uh, item types that is featured in this JSON response. Same thing with the X path. Like, do you really care if about X path information or whether or not it's a rectangle? So I just kind of went through every single one of the item types and made a decision that I didn't necessarily care about those. And that if I was going to be storing data at scale, I could probably save 10 to 20% of storage costs if I got rid of a couple of the different fields. And then uh, in terms of like the skill set for processing this response, uh, you're going to need to just really understand how to either use the map function, the filter function, in, in, you know, the JavaScript filter function, and then you're also going to need to uh, be able to do some looping and you're also probably going to need to do some string concatenation type type methods so it's not like crazy advanced programming in order to process this JSON response it's it's pretty pretty entry to medium level programming stuff um, super fun super super fun and Next thing we're going to do is shift from Postman and go to node.js in order to make a request uh, of the API because I think that it's awesome to experiment in Postman, but to take it to the next level, you know, that's when we get to start to scale things. Thanks so much, everybody. See you in the next episode.